So you have bought a Tesla 2022 model or 2023. You're all excited. You're, you want to get it running and driving, but you can't. It's not working. And furthermore, even the windows don't go down on some of these. Well, this one I already fixed, but oftentimes what happens when the car gets into an accident, the newer ones, the ones with the lithium uh, low voltage battery, is airbags blow up. I already replaced this one. Or even if the airbags don't blow up, the seat belts can lock up if it's a rear end collision. And what happens then is the pure fuse blows up and the car loses high voltage power. And what happens when it does that, when it loses the power, then the car is basically the 12 voltage uh, system of the car is running off of this little uh, lithium battery which actually holds less power than the old batteries that they used to have, the lead acid ones. Uh, this one is, I have uh, cut open. I was trying to get it open. This is the very first one that I cut open. Anyway, see, check out my other video on how to char charge these up. So what happens when the car gets to an accident, the power is cut off and this battery drains really, really quick. And what Tesla has done to prevent uh, uh, basically the car from completely dying and owners not being able to you know, get out of the car, you know, open doors and stuff like that. What the car does is it shuts off the power to half of the car effectively. Like one autopilot computer gets completely turned off. Um, uh, on this car, the windows wouldn't work at all. The, the, the car would roll down the windows just, just a little bit, maybe like two inches so that you could open the doors. Uh, and uh, that's called the post-crash load shed. So when in that mode, the battery lasts a lot longer. So the owner is able to remove a valley boost from the car and they're able to get the car into a tow mode, pull it up a tow truck. Uh, but then if you bought one of these cars and you want to get it running, it's not gonna, it's not gonna run. The high voltage system is gonna be off and the contactor is not gonna close. And eventually if the car is set in action for a long time, this low voltage battery is gonna be dead. And if it's set, uh, for too long, then it's not even going to be fixable. You're going to have to buy a new one. Check out my other video about that, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about the VC front. So this VC front actually looks like this with the cover removed. And that's where that uh, flag is set for the crash, uh, for the load shed. So what you need to do to get the car running is you got to reset this VC front. You got to clear that crash uh, uh, flag basically the load shed mode so first thing you want to do is one, once you get a car like that let's try to enter the service mode and check out my other video on how to enter the service mode you got to press on the on the text hold the text where it shows the the, the the VIN number of the car whether it's long range or performance and stuff hold that for a few seconds then enter service and then once you do that you're either gonna get this service mode loaded up or you're gonna get just a blank screen that just keeps loading, it's never gonna actually load. So if you do see this screen, and you see this button, clear post crash load shed, follow these directions, and then you should be good. Uh, if your service mode does not load, uh, or you don't, well, first of all, if it does load and you don't see this button, then that's not your problem. Um, well, I never actually seen that where with the service mode loads, but you don't see that button. But if you don't see that button, then your car probably doesn't have that feature for cooling the post crash load and you got to do a software update. Um, so if you have a, a situation where the service mode does not load, just keep spinning. Then what you can try is you can uh, try hooking up a computer with toolbox access to this ethernet port right there. And then see if there is a command for running the, the same uh, routine for cooling the post-crash load shed. If you can see that routine in toolbox, then that should be enough to get the car running again. But if you're not gonna see that routine in the toolbox, then what you need to do is you need to do a software update. And um, when this computer is, when the VC front is in the load shed, shedding mode, uh, the car may actually not do a software update because it, it's not gonna see some of the computers. Like the one of the autopilot computers is not gonna be detected by the car. Uh, so 
if that's the case then you got to replace this thing but if you are able to download and install the software update updated to the latest version then you should be able to use toolbox to clear the post crash <laughs> load shed so if you are successful at updating the software to the latest version where you can actually see that uh routine in toolbox then that should be all you need to do clear the flag and the contactor should close and the car would be driving again except you also need to most likely replace the low voltage battery but as i said that's not what this video is about um now to do the software update when the car is on the load shed mode you got to power the car off of uh, another 13 alternate alternative uh, 13 uh, volt power source so i got one of these power supplies uh this one is actually not powerful enough to do all software updates uh, but this car did update off of it but another model y that i had it couldn't it would basically uh go into overcurrent uh, it would basically shut off and i had to buy another power supply that can do uh, 50 amps but on this model 3 this i think it's 40 amp power supply it, it did the job um so to do the software update you gotta power the car for this power supply set it to uh, uh 13 and a half volts or 14 volts should be anywhere between 13 and 15 volts or something like that really and uh power the car for that wait for it to download the update do the update even if not everything gets updated as long as the main computer and the vc front get the latest version then you should be able to reset the flag with the toolbox or you just buy one of these uh from tesla the vc front uh it costs 330 dollars plus tax uh or you can contact me i might have one for sale as well and then you replace it it's pretty easy to replace a few bolts a few plugs uh, and uh oh and if you have any old ones that you want to send me uh, i'm gonna try to reset them uh, i take uh, donations for the old vc fronts feel free to send them to me i'll pay for shipping uh, so if you replace the vc front then you don't even need the software update you just need a software reinstall uh, so after you replace the vc front you should be able to power the car from one of these power supplies and uh, enter service mode it should work by then and then the service mode press the button to uh, uh, reinstall software and that will flush the vc front with the current firmware and the car should be able to power itself and the contactors are going to close now um, if the contactors don't close then you probably have a different problem check your connections or the high voltage connections and uh, one issue that a few uh, people had is the PCS which is inside the, the penthouse kind of part of the battery sort of uh, sometimes goes bad as well in accent supposedly so there's a small chance that you might also need to replace the PCS well hopefully this video is helpful to someone and if it is I would appreciate it if you would leave a comment thank you